would say, in my life, um, it's it's a question of discernment, and it's also it's it's your life's work. I mean, for all of us, that's our. You're just saying our life's work uh, to discern between those two voices. One is a death wish; the other one wants us to remember who we truly are and be healed and whole. And uh, because of the ego, it seems like the voice of the spirit is, is pushed out, drowned out. The ego speaks first, the ego speaks loudest. That's why we need a lot of discipline and a lot of mind training and a lot of discernment. The simplest, most direct way to discern between the two voices is what Jesus calls the one right use of judgment. We're used to thinking that judgment is an entirely negative thing. He says there is one right use of judgment. And the one right use of judgment is the question, how do I feel? So that's a, a good start. How do I feel? Is a lot of us were trained not to pay attention to our feelings. We became so intellectual, so cognitive, so into rational uh, kind of thinking with everything that, that we were divorced from our feelings. I know that was that's the kind of family, biological family I projected out. No one in that family ever, in all those years, asked me how I was feeling. I was always told what to do, what not to do, what was right, what was wrong, what to eat, what to eat more of, what to eat less of, what the bad things were, what the good things were. And, you know, when I get home from school, walk in the door, you know, drag in the door some days, that question, how do you feel, was never asked. My family was more like that John Bradshaw joke about grab it, there's a feeling loose in the living room. Uh, you know, it's it was so devoid of, of feelings that, that just nobody talked about feelings. You could talk about the weather for ten minutes, half an hour if you want. You could talk about sports scores. Uh, there were all these things that you were allowed to talk about, but feelings was not one of them. And so for me, just to begin to get in touch with the feelings, like how am I really feeling about this, is a good inroads toward that discernment and that intuition. Now having said that, I will say that the ego is sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. It is ingenious. And what it does is it, it generates an entire range and set of emotions and sensations that feel good, that are all part of its system. So when you're asking the basic question, how does it feel? Oh, it's going to come in there with its best feel-good trap. Feel-good, um, you might say, disguise of, of how you authentically feel much, much deeper. Because the mind is very deep. And when the subconscious mind has these locked away beliefs, it generates a lot of emotions that are like pseudo good, but aren't really good. For example, pleasure and pain. In this world, it seems pretty, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between pleasure and pain. And in the Course of Miracles, Jesus says, it's impossible to seek for pleasure without finding pain. Oh, now we're starting to unveil some of the ego's tricks. And, and Jesus also says that the ego does not want you ever to let that, that into awareness. Because as soon as you get that into awareness, you're going to start opening to miracles and not falling for these tricks of seeking and not finding. If you knew that every time you seek for pleasure, you're actually seeking for pain in a disguised way, you would stop it. If, if you went, every time you went to the cookie jar, you got an electric voltage. Or think how that would change sexuality. Every time you were kind of working it up towards an orgasm, you got a big zap of voltage. Or a sharp stab of pain. A little bit of a migraine stab every time 
when I would start to, you've seen those studies with rats, and they start to go for the cheese, and they start to get a, a jolt every time. It takes us a while. The Holy Spirit is not, doesn't use those kind of tactics, but it takes us a while to start to raise these deep uh, truths and principles, healing principles in, in our mind to the point where we can voluntarily say, ah, the miracle offers me everything that I want. Pleasure is fleeting. We all know that. It's temporary. It should be a, a tip. It should tip us off right away because it's so fleeting and temporary in nature. And pain is fleeting and temporary as well. Although at times it can seem very chronic. So for me, that's, that's part of this gradual, gradual work of discernment over the years where, you know, if I see something that I desire, it's going to bring me pleasure, uh, the Holy Spirit's like saying, here, I need your attention over here. Remember, you're a miracle worker, and we got some important miracles to do over here, and, and nothing is ripped away. I can't say that it's, this has been a journey of sacrifice. I don't feel like, ah, I follow the Spirit, and now, just blah. Totally neutral. Nothing. I feel nothing. You know, no, I feel the joy and exuberance of the Spirit from all this following miracle. But also, there's been a lots of, I call them like whims, lots of beautiful little things that came in along the way, which were just kind of like little signs and symbols, like, thank you for, for following me. Thank you for devoting your mind to discernment. And it definitely has not been a path of deprivation to me. I, I don't feel like I could say, wow, I followed the Spirit, I found happiness and joy and peace and freedom, but it had a tremendous cost. I can't say that. You know, some people do say, well, it cost me, it cost me this and this and this. I, I can't sit before you and say that I feel like it's cost me anything. It's been like a free gift. It was, it was the ignorance of believing the ego that was filled with costs. That was, that was costing everything. It was costing me the awareness of everything. So it's a, it's a great question and it's one of those that it takes a lot of deep introspection and, and, and deep inner work to really start to, to come to that clarity. Is there a way to ask in the moment? Like ask the spirit what is true? Yeah, I mean, when I first started off, I think consciously on the spiritual journey, it was like around, probably around 1984 when I really kind of got into it. And I would, I would often ask, sometimes it was just the prayer of my heart, but oftentimes it was asking, and the first way that the Spirit reached me was when I would see a movie, or read a book, or read a mind, hear a song or something, it felt like, like somebody had a little feather and was tickling inside my heart chamber. It was a very kind of experiential heart experience that started with, for me. I would just read a certain line and a tickle would go. Or I would hear something on a movie or on the radio or something and a tickle would go. So then I started to follow the tickle. And I'd been 10 years in university and I knew that this tickle was not intellectual, for sure. So I followed the tickle, and then the tickle eventually led me to the course. 